everyone welcome back to Brookdale farm well it's a bit of a muggy day here today uh, and uh, we're just waiting for it we had some rain last night and we're just waiting for everything to dry out before we can start harvesting again um, I thought today I just wanted to talk about commodity prices and stock prices on a small farm now uh, Coles and Woolworths have announced record profits this year and there's a cost of living squeeze as we all know we're all feeling that a little bit now on the farm we can't control our commodity prices that go off the farm in a particularly big way unless we're value adding to them so I've got some cull sheep for sale at the moment and I've just sold them I didn't get a good price for them I got $15 a head now last year I probably could have sold them for uh, $50 a head um, this year I wasn't game to put them through the markets because I think I would have come out of that with a bill by the time I'd paid yarding fees and stuff on them so because I'm a small farmer I can look at selling things in other ways so I have sold these ones privately interestingly even though they're cull sheep uh, old cull sheep they've gone to a butcher uh, who is going to get a couple more years breeding out of some of them and uh, butcher some of them quite soon um, now I've also spoken to a number of other people who have been buying or selling lambs I know somebody down the road who bought uh, 300 lambs for five dollars a head and I spoke to somebody else the other day who bought 350 lambs for three dollars a head now it is just not viable for any farmer to sell sheep off their property for three dollars a head every animal that you sell off your property takes something away from your land so they've eaten the grass they've taken up the calcium and the phosphorus to make their bones um, and to help them grow there's other trace elements in there as well so once you sell that off your property you've lost those minerals and uh, and energy from your property so you have to do something to put it back on mostly that's uh, top dress your pastures with with fertilizer so you've got healthy pastures um, but for three dollars a head you can't keep uh, buying the fertilizer to grow those sheep for that price now this is the time where a small farmer uh, either a small farmer or you've got to be enormous like NAPCO Northern Area Pastoral Company uh, where they can just buy the entire supply chain and uh, they're big enough to supply direct to Woolworths uh, I think it's Woolworths um, and they own everything in between uh, or if you are a small farmer this is the time where you where you need to have found your niche found your market that you are supplying to so I grow wheat and I grow oats and I sell these in 25 kilo bags I'm not big enough to grow enough to take them into CBH and sell them through CBH so I value add to my grain by uh, bagging it up and delivering it directly to the stock feeders and to anybody else who wants to buy it this way I know what my price is going to be now, I've built up a customer base over a number of years so I know roughly how much I'm going to sell COVID threw a spanner in the works like with everything uh, except COVID was actually my busiest time ever because eggs were hard to get everybody got backyard chickens and uh, the grain really helped me get through COVID because I lost a lot of other work and it paid all of our bills that, for those couple of years uh, the the sheep um, we are just starting to market our own meat as well um, there's a lot of paperwork to go through and regulatory rubbish red tape um, it's not rubbish it is important that we are selling a good quality product now as a small farmer 
you can either sell a premium product for a premium price, or you can sell the same product that you get in Woolworths uh, for two thirds of the price. Um, now this is what we've chosen to do because we're trying to help out some of our family and friends as well who are really struggling. So we are selling meat that is cheaper than what you can buy it in the shops, uh, but we are still making a reasonable income from it to cover our costs and make a little bit of money. Um, we could go for a premium product and market that hard as something much better than you can get everywhere else. You know, grass fed, free range, all of that stuff. Um, and that is certainly one option. It, but it's really important if you are a small farmer to find your niche, find your market, find what you're interested in doing. And this will help you carry, this will help carry you through as the commodity prices go up and down. Now, every now and then with my wheat and oats sales, the price of wheat through CBH comes up to about the same price that I am selling it for in 25 kilo bags, which means I'm effectively making a loss on it. I don't see that loss because I'm not taking it into CBH. Um, the time I see that loss is when I run out and I've got to buy some in from a friend. But generally, I have a margin and I know what I'm making on it and the commodity price can go up and down on, uh, on the wheat uh, and oats and it doesn't affect me because I have my customer base. The same with the meat. Um, so the, we're not selling lamb, um, we're selling hoggett, uh, which is a sheep that is one to two years old. Um, I like hoggett better because it's got a bit of flavour in it, a bit more flavour than lamb. They're also a little bit bigger. Uh, so for the same butchering costs, there's more meat available, more kilos of meat to sell. Uh, we'd have to sell the lamb at a higher price uh, to make money because they're smaller and lighter. Um, so yeah, with any small farm, if you're, if you're looking at starting out a small farm, the first thing to do is to find your niche, find your market and find how you're going to be different from everybody else. And this will really help you get through the, the times where the big or the medium sized farmers are struggling because commodity prices have dropped and no one can sell anything. Anyway, I hope you found this little video useful. Um, if you're starting out your own small farm or you're already on a small farm, I'd love to hear what your niche is um, because there's lots of different ones out there and it amazes me the imagination that some people have uh, to, uh, to find a market for something that I just wouldn't have thought would, would have been there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks, bye.